Hiya. Good evening, everyone. Hi. We can hear you can you can hear us both loud and clear. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, let's get into this then. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are on planet Earth. Uh, welcome to the Naughty Orty in Conversation. Uh, I'm Harry Thompson, and today I'm joined by my father, Mark Thompson. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi, everyone. Right. Oh, and we we don't have a bio. Um, Dad, who are you? What do you do? What's your, you know, how are you, how are you conducting yourself as a human what? being on planet Earth? As in what I do? I don't know. Well, um, I'm 58 years old. I'm an oil broker. I work in London. Okay. Uh, and I live in Brighton. There we go. That'll do. Awesome. So tonight, I thought we would do something a little fun and something of a personal bucket list to speak to my dad about his neurodivergent profile, right? Is that, exci is that as exciting for you as it is for me? Me? Yeah, the personal well, speaking is. Uh, I'm intrigued where this is gonna end up. Me too, me too. So let's crack into it then, shall we? So um, yeah, I have done this live a couple of times. I did it with Sam Harris and I did it with my friend, Danielle Jarta Hall. Both those videos can be found in my library. Um, and this is a service that I offer people um, very soon. I'm gonna start training to do screening a little more officially. So uh, more about that later, I'll spare you the uh, self promo. Dad, at the beginning, I usually like to get a clear picture of people's family background. I may have to get this cat out because he's doing the head in. Um, and it was, it's obviously gonna be a little bit different asking you that given that we are, are from the same family. I'm from your lineage. I'm the fruit of your loins, as it were. Right, that's it, cat, out. Because I know your parents, I know your family, and I already have my opinions about them. Yeah, well, I think the I think the strangeness comes must come from my mother. Strangeness, eh? Yeah. Um, what do you mean by strangeness? Well, she's slightly she was slightly potty, wasn't she? She was uh, one of a kind. Yes. Um, I think for sure, whatever happened to me and you. <laughs> probably came from her i suspect okay i, I think I, her mother i think her mother was as well actually do you uh, yeah do you have memories of what's her name jess jess yeah you have memories of nana jess yeah she was quite um yeah i i do have memories of her yeah not not huge memories okay the best memories because she was quite sorry go on, go on no no she was quite ill um when I was younger and then obviously she died but uh, she she was I don't know I don't want to label but she was quite an odd person right so we, we you talk you you talk to her and say hi how are you just say it's Friday type of thing she um that's where the randomness comes from maybe oh that's I mean she she would ask her a question you never get a straight answer it's just she'll do it she'll She'll just go on to another conversation as if that conversation never set, uh, happened in the first place. But okay. I think, Emo I think emo emotionally, was she quite warm? Was she a cold? no, no, cold. she was quite cold. Yeah, quite cold, and um, so cold emotionally. Quite insular, quite cold, uh, quite but direct. Her, but her thoughts were quite haphazard. Would she um, go off random? And... Yeah, right, right, okay. Um, and this is your mother's mother. Yeah. So yeah. I suspect that a lot of that went into, obviously, your nana and my mother, who was one of a kind, wasn't she? She was, uh, she was definitely one of those. You yeah. asked her what day it was, and she'd say apples. Oh, that's interesting, because I don't know much about her. So that's, and because interestingly, interestingly, nana, when she was alive, didn't speak about her mother much. No, she she was an only child, and I don't think it was. I think it was quite a uh, odd upbringing, quite Victorian, quite odd, 
Loveless. Quite yeah. loveless. I think she always she always spoke with um, uh, love about her father. Yeah, but yeah. not at all about her mother. I can or, almost like slight yeah. disdain. Yeah, yeah, because I can. I've got lots of memories of Nana talking about her father, but yeah. just nothing. I think when almost I got zero. In, when I got into genealogy and I was trying to make the family tree, she yeah. only spoke about her mother matter of family. So that's that's interesting. But uh, so the question is: Is neurodivergence in the family? Obviously, because you have three neuro, neuro, neurodivergent children. But when you look at your siblings, when you look at your parents, and think about your grandparents, can you notice autistic and ADHD patterns? 100% yeah 100% wonderful thank you very much and you've already confirmed you're 58 59 next year um um you're looking good no you're 59 a... this august yeah oh excuse me next month i mean yeah yeah and you're looking good aren't you I feel good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. someone we... said to me the other day that they thought i was 40 so you i'll know? take that okay take that you know that that often happens did you know that with um, uh, people who are hypermobile, autistic people, ADHD people, we tend to look younger. Did you know that? No. Right, there we go. Okay then, so now that I've got a, uh, an outline of the family history, as articulated by you, obviously bearing in mind, I am from the same gene pool. Uh, do you, what's your long-term memory like? Do you, can you remember being in nursery? Yes. Right, okay. Um, now, I want to get a picture of you um, interpersonally, right? So, and I know a lot of these answers, so I'm going to um, almost um, uh, act as though I don't know you well. Um, with regards to your interactions, are you, were you the kind of child who would initiate conversation? Would you avoid people? Um, did it depend? Do you ever recall finding it difficult to make friends and form connections with other children? No, I didn't have any problems with that, no. No, okay. Um, do you know uh, perhaps anything about how they saw you? Did you probably know? as a disruptor and okay. someone that probably had the balls to challenge a teacher when they didn't. So they kind of looked through me okay. to do that, which they couldn't do. So they probably saw me as sort of the class clown. Okay, right. And was that a role you relished? Um, did you understand that that well, was I, your role? I think, I think I was very outgoing anyway. So I think it was natural actually. Yeah. Um, do you ever find that uh, jokes go over your head? Are you ever, um, do you ever misinterpret what's being said to you? Yes, Lou will always say that my wife, Lou, my wife, she'll always say, well, you just didn't get that, did you? Yeah. Feel and free I'd go, to... I did. And she'd go, well, uh, no, because that just completely went over you. Yeah, okay. So right. I probably hear what I want to hear and don't hear what I don't want to hear. Okay, that's on it. That's honest Set bit of self-insight there. Thanks. Or, or, or believe that I heard something that obviously wasn't. Yeah. But I turned, yeah. I, I turned it into a laughter rather than actually hear what actually was said yeah, yeah. does that make sense yeah, yeah yeah um what do you like with um reciprocal give and take conversation do you check in with other people to see how they are what their interests are i would probably say that the biggest complaint is that i probably don't hear the other person enough right or have empathy towards them okay okay um and in conversation do you have a tendency to to monologue to talk at length about things that might interest you or um no I, I would no no I'm quite divulgent on listening to both sides it's you know I'm, I'm interested in other people and what they do okay it's not all about me that sounds terrible but it's not I'm just saying I do I am interested genuinely about what other people do yeah well I'm going to come on to being interested in other people in just a moment um so uh oh but by the way but if i'm really bored with them i wouldn't give them the time of day I've, okay, i cut on. off go on 
No, if I if I'm if I feel that I'm completely bored and have nothing in common and this is going nowhere, then I would be quite ruthless and just cut it, cut it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. Or, or be be um, curt, polite, but yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. Um, do you remember being exhausted by people, or are you more energized by people? Energized by people. Right. Um, do you like to be alone? No. No. Okay, so you feel like you're the kind of person who uh, derives your energy from being around others, so you're quite extroverted. Yes. Okay. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Makes sense. Um, do you have a strong sense of justice? If something isn't fair... If I feel I'm wronged, yeah, and I'll just keep going until there's no life left in it. If, if I believe I'm right, I will go the extra mile. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, and also... Sometimes I feel, if, if I am wrong, even though I know that I'm not wrong, but if people, if, if, if there's a justification that I'm completely wrong, I will reluctantly withdraw. Interesting. Also, feel free to give examples, because they're usually really helpful. Well, I can't think of an example now, but, it, but you know, even sometimes when I think that I'm right, I could be blatantly wrong and yeah. I'll exhaust it until I actually realise that I'm being a bit of an idiot and then I'll yeah. say, sorry, I'm really sorry. Yeah. What do you like in uh, group settings? Perhaps if uh, you're on the beach in Brighton and there's a, there's a group uh, present and people are having, uh, you know, chit chat, um, do you find that a comfortable situation, uncomfortable? Do you ever feel oh, I'm not quite sure when to join in, or maybe when you start, I'm not quite sure when to stop. Do you find yourself getting up and moving around a lot? Do you find that those kinds not, of... No, I tend to just gravitate to the ones that are the most fun. Go on, that's interesting. Or the most interesting. So and like... I would probably not gravitate to the ones that would would be more sort of slightly awkward. Oh, go, that's, I've, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. Go on. So what's so so um, a, a shy, awkward, quiet person is not the kind of person that you would feel compelled to uh, strike up a conversation with. It sounds terrible, but yes, Dad. Just honestly, honesty is very much appreciated on this. Well, that, that is the truth. It, it's it, yeah. it's not good, but that is the truth. I'm gravitated to people that have got dynamic personality and fun and um jokes yeah and have you always or liked mostly li or mostly listening to mine to most listen to yours so do you see do you see yourself as um the funny person in the group yes yeah okay do you think you're funny yes does lou think you're funny no <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Um, Which obviously means that I'm probably not as funny as I think I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you ever have difficulty perhaps um, relating to other people emotionally? Like if someone came to you and they were crying and they were talking about the situation, how would you feel about that? You know, would you try and help them? Would you feel, oh God, I don't know what to do here? Um, no, I, I would help them, yeah. Yeah, but okay, so this is an in, there's an interesting distinction here because we might be impelled to help, to fix, to resolve, but maybe inside we notice, because if I'll be honest with you, sometimes if a person comes to me and says, oh, my, um, my uh, brother is in the hospital, my dad's in the hospital, because I'm not there, it might be difficult for me to immediately empathise. Whereas if I saw them in hospital, right, it, the, 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 the close proximity might help me, you know. Well, there's a, no, if someone came to me and said that, the first thing I'll do is, is there anything I can do for you? Can I help? Can I drive you up there? Can I drop something off? Can I do something that might be more suited or better than going to see that person itself? Okay. Okay, cool. So being available for someone if they needed me. Do you, have you ever felt sorry for inanimate objects? Like maybe you open up your sock drawer and think, oh, I've not worn the ones at the back for a bit. I'll, be, I'll give them a go. 
no. I'll just go to the ones at the front. Yeah. I, I, I will go to the ones that are available. Are you a creature of habit? Do you like do you like your routine? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, so you got it, so you got it, you gotta give me um I want I right. want to give uh, a great example. The alarm clock goes off at 12 minutes past five. I have to be in the shower by quarter to six and I have to, whatever happens, leave at quarter past, even if it is slightly early for the train. But if I go to 17 minutes past, I'll panic. OK. Do you like to have a plan? Do you like to know what's coming up? Yes, I know. I want to know what's going on all the time so I can prepare myself for it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if I said to you, Dad, this August, why don't we just book a flight to Paris without a plan and see where we end up after a, a couple of weeks? No, I like no. I probably would. I probably. You mean being impulsive? Yeah, or spontaneous. You know, or do you like to? Do you like to have certainty around what's coming up? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, what if, for whatever reason, something? Because you know. Um, life is full of change it's one of life's most unchangeable inevitabilities what if things change you know what if you plan to go somewhere later on and for whatever reason it it had to it had to be cancelled would that be um, would that make you freak out a bit yeah a little yeah. bit yeah okay well cool. if i know because i've already prepared myself in my head during the day that this is what's going to happen yeah I think you can also be intolerant of uncertainty by proxy as well. Um, you know, yeah. do, you remember, do you remember when I was hitchhiking around America? Yes. Um, a lot of people I crossed paths with said, I bet your mum's worried about you. I said, no, she's fine. It's my dad who's calling me up every day asking, are you going to stay there? Are you going to stay there? Is that it now? You know, OK, that's enough now. You know, I think you get intolerant of uncertainty by proxy as well. Like, like with well, that yeah, but that's because it's you're my son. So I want to make sure you're okay. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I understand where you're coming from, but I think if anybody was listening tonight, you know, you, you you'd be naturally worried for your children, wouldn't you? So I, yeah, maybe hitchhiking was an extreme example, but well, not really because you did. Yeah, I did, and I lived. I'm absolutely fine. Um, but what I'm saying is. Perhaps there have been times in my life when I'm waiting for some news and you ask me a lot, you know, have you heard yet? Have you heard yet? Have you heard yet? You know, and I say, yes, dad. You've heard, I've, uh, the last time we did the Zoom meeting, I told you about five times we're meeting at 10 to 8 and you kept asking what time I was, what time we were meeting. Well, I can't remember that, but I, I'll believe it. I mean, tonight I did ask you about the insurance with the car. Because obviously I'm, you know, but then there's no answer. So no, know, exactly. Then... So, so that, that's that's a good example when things are uncertain, example. when there's no concrete answer and things are left in the air. Well, I, I just like if I do something or if I do a task, it has to be done. Right. Okay. Do you? I've got a memory of a few years ago, you kept a bunch of wires behind the TV that had no discernible use, and they were moved by someone. And I remember you calling a family meeting. <laughs> oh god they, they they the the wires had moved about an inch to the right and i remember you you know going into one like so what about when people move your things well okay so for good oh, and, and is... do people do people move your things or do you forget where you place them no i know exactly where i put stuff and for example if i put my passport on the table and i just nip up to shop the shops and come back it's moved i'll panic because it's been moved because i know that that's where i put it okay do, do you find yourself misplacing objects and your belongings a lot no because i have it replaced for them yeah um do you ever are you a procrastinator no do you ever put things off no so if something you know if, if something's got to be done do you do it <coughs> yeah if i had to do something today i'd have done it yesterday so do you ever find your, so would you ever find yourself perhaps uh, putting off tasks that require a lot of mental energy? Like if you get an email with lots of instructions and it's quite long. No, I get them done. Right, okay. Um, what about decision making? <coughs> Straight away. Right, you can make decisions easily? Yeah. Okay, what about- um, and, and, you... and, and under pressure, I'm good under pressure. So I will, at work, I have 
some pretty serious things go wrong. Yeah. And there'll be another 25 conversations haranguing me at the same time. Okay, okay. And I'm pretty good like that. I'm quite ruthless and I will put that to bed straight away. Okay, cool. Um, now, what was I going to ask next? Okay, so maybe as a child, from what you remember, as a child, as a teenager, um, right now, are there any sounds, are there any um, uh, sights, smells that you find particularly aversive? Are you funny about the way your food's presented? If you, Dad, just before you were getting annoyed with the dog, you you get annoyed with hair dryers. I've seen you get annoyed when buses hair go dryers by. screaming. I hate when the right, girls yeah, scream. It. When it, the girls scream, I can't. I just can't deal with it. When when the girls were little and I used to play with them, like seriously, you you you'd come in every hour going right. It's all getting a bit mental in here now. It didn't matter how quiet we were being. It was just the movement, you know. We were playing in silence by the end of it, and it was still too much for you. I think your viewers are going to think I'm a nutter. Dad, come on, come on. Okay, I can't. I, we, don't, I can't. We, don't, we don't. We don't need a. I don't like here. things that are disorganised. No, no, we're not. I'm not. I'm not talking about that now. I'm talking about sensory differences. Yeah. Yes, well, that's what I'm saying. I don't like things that disorganise. No, 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 Right, uh, the girls shrieking, the dog literally drives me mental, just whining and barking at me the whole time. But I suppose she would with anyone, to be fair. Um, extreme sort of, if it's really quiet and then someone turns the music up full blast, literally from that just literally freaks me out. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, Smell. Smells. Are you, are you, do you find yourself... Um overwhelmed by smells you, dad also growing up you would always um tell me to you know stop playing music no because i think it's just that it's like in my head loud music yeah exactly that's what i mean that's that's exactly it, it yeah it, it's chaotic in my head you've got a piano in your house i play it and i'm like why is there a piano here well, that's not my piano. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, what about food? I think I think you um, shall we say fussy when it comes to food. Well, you like Lou, Lou says this, but I don't think I am. Um, oh, this is why I needed help with this because you're not going to answer honestly. Okay. Right, and you've got your right. Okay, I tell you what. I like. I like what I like. Yes. Okay. And that's a very good description because if, if, for example, you know, I have one of my favourite all-time foods and then someone tries to make me not have it and give me butter beans or something or whatever, I'll freak out and throw oh, them out. Oh, tofu, or when we went for an Ethiopian, you were very outside your comfort zone. You yeah. Need, that... you, need your, you, need your, you need your Greg's sausage roll and a glass of Ribena, and then you're happy. <laughs> um, well, to be fair, I have had that forever. So always by my bedside, I'll have that. But who, doesn't like, like a, who doesn't like a Greg sausage roll? Yeah, to be honest, Unless yeah. you've got some um, viewers from outside of the UK to explain what a Greg's, I mean, it's a one-off thing. Everyone loves it. They even do vegan ones now, Harry, you know that. So I'm sold. Don't get me started. If I have to, um, I think I think when it comes to food, I think the best way to answer it is I know what I want and I know what I've I got. Like. A, I've got a memory of you in childhood. We were having a family barbecue, and um, uh, my, my mother um, she ser she served strawberries, and uh, I remember you were excited, but then she revealed that she put a bit of vinegar on them, right? Oh, yeah, and you went ballistic and went and got a yogurt. And, and sat sulking. But why would anyone want to put vinegar on some beautiful strawberries? A little bit of sugar and some cream. Yeah, you're not very hipster, are you? Well, I don't know anyone right now that I can tell you that likes vinegar on their strawberries. <laughs> yeah. What about routines? 
Oh God, hundred yeah, percent. I mean, more like um, more more sensory stuff. You know, like I think right. I've got and I've got to go into childhood here. When I was um young, and I would and I remember my siblings and I, <laughs> we didn't want to hold Dad's hand. Right, nothing to do with Dad as a person, but he would pick your cuticles down to the bone. You like you like picking, don't you? Touching. Yeah, tactile. Yeah, I guess I, yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I mean. So we've talked about being uh, averse to certain uh, sensory information, like sounds, plenty of examples there. Um, what about the opposite? What about craving certain sensory input? Well, I, I think if someone's not showing it back. No, 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 no I'm, not, I'm not talking about, um, uh, you know, other people. I'm talking about on a sensory level, right? Maybe, so, so some of us like to feel certain fabrics. Going back to being sensory averse, a lot of kids hate their uniform. They hate wearing socks. They hate wearing jeans. Um, well, I think that probably the biggest one of all is that drives me utterly mental is when people buy me clothes and they want me to wear slim fit when I'm quite a big guy, right? I like it to be loose. If anything tight, I feel claustrophobic. Okay, here we go. And you like having your hair short, don't you? Uh, well, I didn't, yes, yes I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just wondering if there's any sensory stuff around that. Like it's like your hair gets in your eyes, you know, or it's, it's just there, isn't it? It's just- No, I just think it looks neater. All right, so it's about appearance, that one. Okay. Um, how do you like- Oh that? yes, the other thing, um, Lou just reminded me, I have to cut the labels out of anything because it just drives me insane. Yes, here we go. These are the examples I want. Thanks, Lou. This is why I needed help. Right, Dad, how do you like your apples? If after the first bite, it's not crunchy and crispy, it's in the bin. I can't go through it. Yeah. I can't so, go through it. It's um, got to be a crisp Braben or something pretty crispy. Yeah, and I can recall being a child, um, you would always remark on the, te the texture of food, and if it was crunchy or crispy, then it would be in your good books. Yeah, I mean, there's a million examples, but I mean, for apples, apples. if you give me an apple that's been in the bowl for two weeks and someone says, go on, it's going to be lovely, I'll just, I think they're an alien. It's just yeah. going to go straight in the bin. Well, I remember when we were children and when you would come home, if you'd been shopping, the apples would go straight in the freezer. Really? I don't remember that. Yeah. Okay, I've never, I, really? I remember, Ben and I remember, we talk about it. Okay, well, okay. I'm gonna have oh, to plead the right. fifth. Right, talk, 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 talk me through this one. You constantly adjusting the lights. Yeah, I don't like uh, searing bright lights, like a searchlight. Yeah. So if, if I come into the house, and every single light is on, it drives me insane. Yeah. A, because I can't see the point in having it. B, what's the point in having every single light on in the house? Everything. And then if you are, just nice, soft, ambient light that creates sort of like a, a nice... Um, I've got... I've got um, me a memory. I remember it was Ben, myself, and we had a couple of friends, and we were being loud, and we were trying to wind you up, and we were, and but like it's like we didn't exist because you were staring at your phone, and um, you were so focused on what you were doing, and we were like round you, and we were like taunting you, saying things, and then Ben went to the light, slightly dimmed it, and you shot up like a meerkat, and we and we found it amusing because all of the noises, all of the hullabaloo you didn't even notice, but the moment he slightly dimmed the light, you noticed it immediately. And well, that's an extreme example, but I mean, I, I, I can't remember that, but. 
<laughs> I know. Well, a good job I can, eh? Yeah. Um, sure. and, um, and what about temperature and fans as well? We remember being on holiday in Spain and you kept coming in and slightly adjusting the fan. And we kept saying, Dad, leave it alone. And then, and then it was so dark, it was pitch black, the, the door was slightly ajar, and we saw your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and because we, and we went down, um, and you and you panicked, and then pulled it out. I think I think that was more the point that when it's like thirty eight degrees in the evening and there's no air conditioning, you're going to get very hot in the evening. And that's 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 the reason. Do you always attribute it to external factors? Your your inter your internal working, putting it down. Um, Oh well, you know that was an extreme example. Well, that was because it was a really hot day. Well, no, I mean, you know, it's thirty six, thirty eight degrees C in the middle of the evening, and you're sitting there, story, trying to sleep, and it's just I felt that it would be much better to go to sleep under a cool fan. That's all. Do you think? Do you think you're a cool guy? Do you think you're trendy and hip? No. Did you? Are you? Um, do you keep up with fashion trends and everything? No. What about, what about um, when you went to Ben's gig? How's that? It was just a load of noise. <laughs> I just didn't understand it. <laughs> you it was a so load of screaming, and and I don't think you <laughs> understood it either. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I was not a fan of whatever sound. It just sounded like someone was wailing and in pain for about an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Bev, I, I can't argue with that. I agree. But I can remember looking at you thinking, this is not your comfort zone, is it? Do you like new experiences? Well, no, I did it for Ben. I know why you, I know why you did it. Don't worry about why you did it. I want to know about how you felt about it. Terrible. Wonderful. Brilliant. Moving on. Do you like new experiences? Like, if I said, Dad, let's go to um, Venezuela for a holiday, would you be up for that? Um, if I said, let's go skydiving, let's go... <coughs> Do, oh, no, do, you like no, not. do you like novelty? Or do no, you like I'd, nev I'd never that? do anything like that, no. no. Well, that's because I've got quite bad vertigo, as you know. I don't like heights, so... <coughs> no, I would go to Venezuela, yeah. Okay. But I wouldn't jump out of a plane. Right, OK, cool. Not even if someone said, I'll give you 50 million quid for charity. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I'd give you 50 million quid and then give it to charity? Because it would make me so ill doing it that... I think okay. that's what I'm saying. It's extreme. I would not do it. Okay, cool, cool. Right. It took me about half an hour to get in the sea this afternoon because it was so cold. Yet when I got in there and I dived in, it was very warm. I, I have got plenty of memories of you complaining about the temperature not being in the Goldilocks zone. I just, you know, it's like um, going on holiday. I want to, I want the sea to be warm and blue. Okay. I don't um, want it to be green and dark. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a routine at night, like before you go to bed? Like, do you have to check the doors and do you have to? No. You know, no, I do the lights and take, put the dogs away. That's about it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, what about interests? Fixed interests in things. Do you remember? Do you remember as a child? What What did you get really um into? Um. So we're we're going back to what 60s, 70s, aren't we? So did you have did you have videos? Were there books? Were there did you ever collect anything? Um, no, I, can't, I haven't got any memory. Well, yes, I mean football cards and football shirts and being a I wanted to be a footballer. Okay, so there's there's loving. I know you loved playing sport, and I know you were very good at it. But um, were you also? Did you have a fascination around the players? Did you have a fascination around the club's history? Yes. I mean, yeah, because I've always known well, only of the only of the team I support. Right. Okay. But I'm quite knowledgeable of all the other teams' players, whether it be football, rugby, or cricket, or whatever. I'm very knowledgeable. But if I've got a particular interest in my team, then I would know who played in 1972 in the Super Cup final, whatever it was then. Do you think you're ever socially awkward? No. Hello. Sorry? I was calling for Lou's input there. Um, well, she's upstairs. I don't think I'm socially awkward in that 
No, because I'm very good with. I mean, I always think you're, you're a good, my, but, but but you like being the host, right? I remember I when, one of my have, sorry, go on. No, I think one of my fortes, um, particularly in my, you know, I'm very very privileged with my career and what's happened, and I know the top CEOs of most of the companies that we deal with and their friends. And yet I would be still extremely polite and respectful to the janitor in our office. Uh, do you, um, do you recognize? And have to and give him time or her time. Do you recognize authority? Um, did you have issues with authority? Cause you like, you like being the boss man, don't you? Well, I did, but I'm not, not so much now. Um, do you, are you comfortable with delegating tasks to other people? To other people? Yeah, like, or would you rather do the job yourself because you, for fear that they might not do it to your standards? Correct. You, thank you, there we go. You know that one's true. You know you well, like- Well, only the, because I'm so fastidious with what I do and I look into it with so much detail that I often wonder would someone do it better than me? So it's a lot easier and, less time consuming just to do it myself that that does cause issues because if one of the members of staff feel that they could do it better then that might cause an issue do you remember when you got annoyed with the tap that was dripping i still do there's one just here just constantly taps but you're like you're like that around the house aren't you like you have to make sure everything is working well, um, that's because the other mostly way when that. Grandpa did the house up over the years, most things went wrong, like the radiators. Don't you dare, don't you dare criticise Grandpa's manual prowess. He was not good on rads. He's probably, uh, he's probably, <coughs> probably watching this. Well, you know what, Dad? Your DIY skills are not top notch, and you know it. Yeah? Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> All right. So that must be an interesting experience. So whilst you find it difficult to allow others to do jobs with those things that you might not be inclined to do, that must be quite distressing. Oh, no. If, if it, what do you mean around the house? Well, I don't know. You give me examples. Otherwise, I'm going to have to keep dipping into my memory. Well, I mean, we've got very, very good builders now, so I'm very entrusting them and um i don't seem to worry about that too much these days okay if that's what you're asking me yeah yeah sure so i want to go back to interest because i kind of um kate brought it brought it back to sensory and routine stuff for a minute um so f- football growing up you know interested in what you and you loved playing it but you preferred did you didn't you prefer rugby oh uh, yeah i mean i like them all have you ever found yourself becoming um, fascinated with other people? Like maybe, maybe a foot, maybe um, the personality of a footballer or their life story, their biography. Because I, I've known you to read a lot of autobiographies over the years, and I don't. Well, I, think, I, I, don't I, I think I like you. Um, understanding what brought them from A to B and how they got to where they are now, whether it be a tragic example of Paul Gascoigne or the, the brilliance of Lionel Messi or whatever. I mean, I, I'm just interested in how anybody, actually not just in sport, but anybody becomes as good as they are. Because I just want to know what makes them okay. um, successful. Yeah, and it, I, I suppose um, those who are of that calibre and status would make sense. But then some of your fixations are a little more random. Mike Poole, for instance. No, that, that's just a no, general... No, 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 come on. Don't, don't you dare elude my grasp, young man. I think we all found Mike Poole. No, 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 we're not talking about all of us. I, well, what's, come on, you like characters, don't you? Oh, well, that's a different... You know, it could be Mike Poole, it could be anybody. Um, but... He is one of the most fascinating characters, I think. Exactly. I, Here you go. Talk. You, this is what I mean. But the, the memories we've got of him are so funny that it's almost like he becomes a cartoon character. I want to confirm 2130 with you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, if you were... 
outside with your bags at 21.33, he would go into a, literally a spasm. Um, but the, the journey to the airport was just absolutely brilliant. I, I looked upon that as a comedy sketch. Yeah, but I think you're like, you know, like Ricky Chavez, David Brent, those kinds of characters. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you're draw you, I think you are. You're drawn to characters. You're drawn to people you find funny and, and amusing. Who, who isn't? Dad, we're not talking about other people. We're talking about you. Right. Yes, I am. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Um, right. Where are we? When people are explaining something to you, do you ever find um, your mind drifting off or zoning out and thinking about other things? When you're yeah, well, we touched on this earlier. If I'm not interested in, the, in, in, in that conversation, I've, got, I've zoned out. Yeah. OK. And um, did you... Do you see yourself as a masker? Like, do you know what I mean by masking? Like maybe uh, sometimes we, we might be wary of how our natural tendencies um, may cause a concern socially. So we may script. Do you ever prepare little scripts in your head before you meet someone? You know, like, is, is there like a routine of hello, goodbye in your no. head? No. You just, you no. just go. No, I'm very good at that. I'm. I can meet anybody and just can just literally yeah yeah okay straight into the conversation um if you're reading a book do you tend to finish it do you tend to get bored halfway through i'll put it down come if, if i'm not engrossed in it but i know it's a good book i'll put it down and go back a week later rather than just smash it through uh, what what kinds of books do you like to read do you like fiction do you like uh you know uh Factual information, like fact books. Uh, definitely factual. Yeah. Do you like history? Love history. Love history. Okay. So if it was a book about history, you would happily look into it? Well, yeah, 100%, yeah. Do you remember the book I got you a few years ago? Um, law, English laws, uh, historical English laws that still haven't been revoked. Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah. Did you read it? Well, yeah, because it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, no, interest. That's that's what I mean. It's interesting. Do you notice that you have a low tolerance for boredom? Yes. Um, do you get um annoyed with people easily? Well, <laughs> yes, you do. You know <laughs> you do. Come on, I do it as well, Dad. Yes, you know, I'd probably I'm do. So, yeah. I'm so. I, I, I find I know the answer to that question is if. Right. What about? I'm not getting anything out of it. Then I'm 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 done. Do you know what a Karen is? A Karen. Yeah. No. We'll, we'll we'll come to that. What about like in restaurants? Like you complain a lot. Because if they're willing to charge the amount of money you know we, we you know we went to nice restaurants okay we would go to nice restaurants we were lucky to have been able to to do that's, that okay that's not what i'm asking and if they don't come up to my expectations yes 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 of um you know their description of how, or if the wait, the biggest thing that drives me mad is the waiter says <clears throat> this is a good example you'll like this if i've already said i think i'm going to have that and the waiter says well i think that this is a wonderful dish and it comes and it's absolutely rubbish i mean that i'm literally going to go mad because i wanted that dish any the first dish but he changed my mind which is quite rare and it was no way as good as the one that i know that i wanted <clears throat> but i just think that i i just expect perfection when i go into a restaurant do you remember when we went to that Spanish restaurant um, opposite the road <coughs> on which your first house in Brighton was and they gave you a, a burger and it was just two buns without the, the meat in between? That was tragic. Yeah. Um, do you remember when I was um, a baby and your flight was delayed <coughs> and you were asking to speak to the pilot? No, I tell you what. I tell you why I did that. Because we were stuck on the plane for a long, long time, and no one was giving me an answer. So I wanted to make sure that if we were going to get off that plane, 
was it worth me booking another flight with another airline or stay with these people? Yeah. <coughs> I think that's fair enough. We, I think it was something cr tragic, like a 12 hour delay. Do you remember? No, it was um, maybe. Well, no, right. It's it's second -hand 12, in, second -hand I mean, a 12 hour delay. Now on, in fact, I think they changed this to another airport for another flight. So I was trying to calculate, is it better to just throw the towel in with them and get another flight? Or so I just needed the person to speak to that was going to give me the answer rather than just be palmed off. Cool. Right. And it worked. Does it always work? Well, if, if you're polite enough and you're respectful enough and you ask the person that actually knows the information that's going to give you a better result, then yeah. I mean, yeah. So all the, <coughs> so basically I calculated that it's actually worth waiting for that plane. And there was other people were offered to go to um, Stansted and actually they all got on, I could have got, we could have got on that and they all went to Stansted they never got on that flight and the flight that was supposed to be delayed actually took off an hour later. Okay, cool. Where am I going to go next? Um, so yes. Yeah. Um, have you ever been told that occasionally you say something that's quite insensitive or oh, yeah. uh, tactless? Yeah. Yeah. Does that happen often? I can be brusque. Okay. Um, but sometimes might you say something that you're not necessarily aware could be, you know, hurtful. You're, you're talking about insensitive. Yeah. Yes. If, not if, only if, you know, I'm trying to think of an example, if I'm doing a deal. No, more like socially. Oh, you may socially. Have, you, may, you may have a little um, blip and you might end up saying something to people that, you know, might have been a yeah, bit yeah, yeah I, I, I could be guilty of that yeah thank you wonderful um are you an organized person very you know like if you're going away do you like do you like a list do you like to... oh, well i don't have it a uh, list is in there yeah yeah yeah. okay when you talk do you have you remember you remember how um your mother nana talked right and it was it was tangential wasn't it she went off on a tangent yeah can you relate to that or do you stick to one point? No, I don't go off on a tangent like that. No. Do you like to sell things to people? Yes. Yeah. Like you like that. You like, um, like even if it's um, just. Oh, it, it, you know, if we're on holiday and I think that beach is much better than the beach they're going to, I'll try and sell them to go to the beach I'm going to. What about uh, looky looky men? I find them fascinating. Go on. Well, because, you know, there's two, there's two ways of looking at this. You I have to be, you know, I'm not going to be insensitive about it. They, they've come from real hardship. So I find them, I just find what they do amazing. They're, they're actually got all those wares and they're actually selling everything they can to, in order for them to eat or for their family. I think it's uh, so, as you well know, I'll buy everything from them. Yeah, do, but, do, you but like, there is do, like bar, do you like do you like bartering and haggling? Love it. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like because I think that's when you are you feel in the zone, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But even when it's just like like just French bread, you're like this is freshly baked, crispy round the edges, soft inside, rustic French bread. You know, baked in Nice. You know, you like to really sell things to people, don't you? Or what about when Mike Paul didn't have a very up-to-date phone and you convinced him to get a new phone? Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, I, I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. Do you find but, it, do you ever find it, so, sorry, do you ever find it difficult to see other people's point of view? Like, do you, like, do, you have a, do you have a rigid view of the world and is it difficult to compromise? Ooh. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That could go either way. That one. I don't know. Um, I would probably. The answer you're probably looking for is I'd probably be the person telling them. Yeah, I think you. I think it's very clear in your head. You know, you know, you have a clear vision of what you want, how you see it, right? 
Yeah, to the detriment of others. Okay. Are you impatient or? Very. See, it's, it's really interesting. Some things you're very quick. Like you, you know you're impatient. What about, uh, what do you think of Lily, the dog? She just drives me mad. Yeah, because you, you, um, you, you see, I think you've got a good eye for the personalities of animals as well, haven't you? Like, you, you, you can see characters in animals. And yes. You, you, you admire them. Yeah. What about, yeah. Cats? What about cats? Well, that's, I'm not a great lover of cats, but I'm not someone that would just sit there and <clears throat> castigate a cat. I mean, I, I, they're just not for me, but that's fine. It's fair enough. No, honestly, that wasn't a gotcha question. I just want to, I just want to hear how, how you answer some questions. Well, I don't get as much pleasure because a dog will, will, will be much more interfacing than a cat. Yeah. What about, um, see, let's, let's go back a bit, right? We've got plenty of time. Um, were you an active on the go child were you were, were you were you busy Did you, you know or do you like to sit down and take it easy no i like to be busy all the time yeah i i, I, I would say that's the case you know i think even in um even in social situations you you you, you know you, you're up you're walking around a lot um, and you like to be busy you like to you know give people food get people drinks i remember when um your sister and her her husband my auntie and uncle came round and you kept on bringing snacks and putting them on the futon and, and and in the end there was like a mountain of snacks but you were like doing it almost like compulsively well i I'm, i guess i'm a feeder mm -hmm. that's probably why do you like cooking i do yeah i do um what's your signature dish Um, well, you, I, I know what you want me to say. It's a spaghetti bolognese, isn't it, Harry? Oh, I, I was thinking ratatouille. Oh, ratatouille, yeah, yeah. Ratatouille. Yeah. Oh, oh, here's one. People, is it ratatouille or is it ratatouille? And let's see. We'll, we'll have a little vote on that. One. Well, have you got have you got many um, of your guests asking questions or not? Because I can't see, because I'm... Um... Well, we've got um, a lot of Mike Paul-centric questions. People are dying for Mike Paul examples because, you know, that's 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 part of your routine, coming on my lives and, you know... No, I know. I, I, that's just... Um, no, no, it's, I, I should... okay. it's okay. You don't need to justify every answer. No, no, I should stop time. doing that. And I should explain. I, I, I find him one of the most fascinating. I mean, I, you know, he drives <laughs> Loom. I mean, Lou met him for the first time and she just thought he was off, on, I mean, from a different planet. Um, Did she think that about you? Sorry? Did she think that about you? I think she thinks I'm odd. Oh, okay, right. Well, she did marry me, so I, I must yeah. have done something right. I'm, you know, I've got a reputation for being quite antagonistic, right? I, I, I fully admit I get a kick out of winding people up. Are you the same? Do I get that from you? Or do I get that from mum? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not horrible to people outwardly. I mean, I, 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 I'm not, you know, no, I don't go that out is, that that it's, it's completely fine. I'm not suggesting you are. No, one's no but I'm suggesting that I'm not either. No, it's okay. But I mean, when I say, you know, um, is it I won't, I getting, won't getting, getting, a, getting a reaction for the sake of arguing. No, it's more it's more like playful banter. Oh, uh, oh yes. I mean, I could, but yeah. I mean, I'm constantly doing that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. Someone's saying it's a. You know, I'll feed off others. Okay. Right. There we go. There we go. Right. So where was I? Do you ever find yourself hyper focusing on anything? Maybe to the point where you know, you lose track of time and because you're, you're so, you're so into something, you know, you're so in the moment. No, I really, no, I never lose track of time. No, I've always got that in the back of my head that I have to be somewhere X and Y. Yeah. yeah. Um, our timing's important to you. Are you ever late? Are you always on time? Always on time. 
Right, always on time. Okay. Um, do you like to have a lion? No. Even though you always talk, you always um, fantasize about having a lion and you're up at about five o'clock, busying around the house. Well, I don't, I don't think I'm up at five o'clock busying around the house. I mean, I, at the weekends, I, I might stretch myself to 7.30, but, um, but I need to be up doing stuff. But you don't like it when people go downstairs before you, do you? No, I think, I, no, uh, you talk about kids or? <laughs> I don't, I, it's just, uh, we've got, ben, ben and I have memories. <laughs> like going downstairs and we can hear, we, we, <laughs> or like when we used to come home drunk and we were so quiet. And we've got memories of you just being up with us, walking around. <coughs> I can... <laughs> I can't really. Or like I we can't. come downstairs really quietly, really, really quietly. There's a slight creak and we can hear you jumping up and sprinting down. Yeah, but that might be because I think someone's in the house, for God's sake. I mean, you know, if I'm fast asleep, <laughs> I'm not sure where that's going to that conversation. If, if you're fast asleep, you can hear someone downstairs. The natural reaction is you think there's someone downstairs. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> that might be just your uh, little witty ditty but i don't know i can't really answer that <laughs> okay right i'm having too much fun here okay uh, do you ever interrupt people i would probably be guilty of that yeah okay um would you say you're a thrill seeker do you, do you like to be do you like stimulation you know do you like adrenaline are you in a, you know is, is your you know your job at work I, at work I do yeah when yeah. when it's really flying and the adrenaline's yeah. pumping yeah and you get yeah. a big deal out of it yeah yeah but like, that's about it and like do you uh, find yourself gravitating towards like dopamine hits you know like um maybe maybe I mean I I wouldn't be you know lots of people at work like jumping in a fast car and you know dream of riding a Formula One racing car or you know, skydiving or going on a. Um, yeah. I mean, those are, those are, I'd, say, a... I'd say those are quite extreme examples. Um, but do you like um, do you like living life fast? Do you like you know? Do you like a thr the thrill of something like at work, for example? When you do a deal, you know, what does that feel like afterwards? Is it do you feel satisfied? Does it relax you? Does it excite you? Well, the funny thing is. Some deals at work are big and some deals are very small. For me, it's just getting the deal. Are you, um, okay. Whether it's big or small. Yeah, but, so, yeah, but, so what is it? What is, what's the feeling? Is, that, is, it, is, is it stimulating? Is it relaxing? It's the feeling of winning. Okay, so exactly, the feeling of winning. What does, is that? Well, does that, that, would be, uh, that, that would be a competitive spirit, won't it? That would be okay. like the, the feeling but Is of, it energizing? Do you feel like, whoa, yes, you know? Is it exciting? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't outwardly go, you know, fist pump. I'd do it inwardly and say, yeah, it was that. I, I did well there. Okay, right. So kind of satisfaction. Satisfaction. I wouldn't be sort of like fist pumping everybody. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um, do you like giving speeches at like weddings and parties? Uh, yeah. Or... And I can do them unscripted. Oh, so you've done, I've done many, many unscripted. Yeah, so if you were at some kind of function and um, you were asked last minute to just uh, um, maybe open up the event, you know, kick it kick it off. Um, oh, easy, yeah. Yeah, you jump at that opportunity. No, no nerves, just go and do it, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and can you remember for like New Year's Eve parties, if we play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, um, would you like to be the person asking the questions or would you like to be the person answering the questions? I think on that one, a bit of both. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a great one for board games, if you remember. Me, me, me neither. I hate them. So I, 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 I don't really. I've got. I'm nonplussed on that question. Do you find it hard to sit still? Yes. Are you restless, fidgety? Well, to, for things to do. Yeah. Yeah. So things so you so you do need stimulation you need to keep your brain busy yeah 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 okay 
Cool, right, where am I? Uh, what haven't I asked? Okay, um, so have you ever been prone to, would you say you've got an addictive personality? I would say not. Okay, are you all or nothing? Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Do you ever find it hard to see the nuances? Do you ever notice that you can be quite black and white or would you say you can think in shades of gray? No, I would say black and white. Okay, thank you, wonderful. Um, what's your, um, I don't think I've ever asked you a, qu a question like this before, but do you think in pictures, like if I asked you to imagine a church or a, a rose, does that come easily to you? I think when it comes to choosing holidays, I've got this picture of the idyllic setting and beach and restaurant. Yeah. That's a, probably a good example. Or, um, yeah, I mean, a beautiful country walk with a sort of quintessential I, I, English. I, I think that's true. I do think that's true. I think you are the kind of person who has high expectations. Massively high expectations. And then when reality you know, comes along. I'm, I'm often disappointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that I, goes back to the food thing in the restaurant. My expectations are extra, my expectations in life are very, very high. So anything less than excellence, I feel is substandard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I strive, I strive for excellence. Do you like to be in control? <sighs> mm. That's a difficult one. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, don't, I can't really. I think there are definitely some situations when I do want to be in control. And there are some that I'm absolutely, completely, you know, let them get on with it and make my day a bit, make my day a bit easier. OK. Um, do you prefer dressing casually or formally? Well, I, I think both. Both, yeah. But do you um for each occasion? Yeah, yeah. Do you like a uh, you know tracksuit, pajamas, dressing gown? For sure, around the house. And you know, if I'm going out to a nice restaurant, it's quite nice to get a, you know a nice suit on or whatever. I quite like that as well. Okay, cool, cool. Um, right. Do you um as a child, did you have any creative gifts? Did you know? Could you um. Were you good at uh, drawing, painting? Uh, I think rocking? drawing for sure, painting, um, speaking, sport. So not, um, not, not speaking or sport, those aren't uh, disciplines of creativity. Um, well, traditionally. But well, I think drawing there's gonna be, there's gonna be a very There's going to be a very nuanced thinker here who's going to say everything's creative. You know what I mean. Let's, let's for the sake right, of... Right, I think drawing and painting. The, the artistic disciplines. Right? So, okay, so would you... Um, would you copy, draw, or could you come up with original ideas? Copy. Okay, copy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what about with, with other things? You know, um, may, maybe it's in work. Do you ever come up with new ideas? Maybe uh, you think, oh, I know what we could be doing better. Oh, you know, definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. especially in business. Yeah, yeah, so taking initiative. Um, in, A hundred percent. In, in, in innovation, you know. Yeah. Like, so um, you always liked Dragon's Den, didn't you? Still do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so coming up with ideas, coming up with, uh, you know, proposing new models. But being know, entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurial, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, where, when are you, where are you happiest? You know, what's like an ideal day for you? Um, in the office and home. In the office and home, okay. Right, right, okay, cool. You, you, you like, what about a walk? Oh, I love a walk, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you were playing sport? I hate, but my biggest hate is, say, for example, today, the weather was absolutely beautiful. What is the point in getting into a car and driving into the countryside, getting stuck in a traffic jam, literally being stressed out of your head on the M25, because you wanted to go into some national trust property because it was lovely for tea, when yeah, I could yeah. be on the beach having a barbecue and having fun. I just don't see any point in going 
yeah at all yeah yeah okay and that drives me insane do you so like the minute that Lou um, suggests that we get into a car so that I spend half the day in a traffic jam where I could be on the beach swimming and having fun, I'll just literally say, you carry on, I'm not doing that. Okay. Do you like to be validated? Do you like it when people let you know that you've done a good job? You mean, do I like someone saying, well done? Do you like compliments or if you, if you, you know, do you do you look for that are you ever are you motivated by uh, you know maybe well, a lot of people do to... say i do but i can't necessarily see that okay you do and that's okay and um you know what... <coughs> but that would be a form of insecurity i'm definitely not insecure definitely not insecure no right so you're, you're comfortable and confident with who you are completely 100 percent um, so if people uh, maybe... maybe maybe I would look for compliment because I'm very good at what I do. Okay. No, not with other things. Not like when you cook something. You know, do you like to get feedback? Well, I, only because after a while, when you guys used to, I think on I think where you're coming from that, like the ratted twins, because all the days, I think it just became a standing joke. So um, maybe there was a little bit of you know. Uh, yeah. humor in that okay so if uh, people's are uh, critical remarks does that ever you know wobble you you know do you ever take criticism i think i think, I think if it was right a hundred percent and thought through and my idea wasn't um acclaimed and it was thought of as a bad idea I think initially I would probably fight my corner, but eventually I would actually agree that probably you're right. It was not a good idea, would but I say, would probably fight my corner. Are you in, would you say emotionally you're quite level? Do you ever, you know, would, are you, do you ever get reactive? No, I'm definitely not. No, because I think my personality traits are what defines me. So I'm definitely not, yeah. I don't plateau, no. So I would be, bordering highly strong there you go yeah yeah you yes because you can be irritable can't you when i'm irritable when people don't meet my expectations okay wonderful which yeah. is pretty tough okay right so at this point i'm going to go into the comment section i don't know if anyone watching here has any questions for my dad with regards to neurodivergence um i've asked i think most of your guys probably think i'm an idiot no dad see like do you fear that is that is that is that scary no no because but I, I think people would probably look at me like marmite right either like yeah. me or don't like me or there's i don't think there's any in between but i've tried to um honestly answer all your questions um i think i think i've been re reasonably straight with them yeah do you ever find it difficult to talk about your emotions or identify your emotions? You know, if, if someone said, how are you feeling? Is that, does that knock you for six or is it, is it confusing? Is it not easy to answer? No, because I think people can read me. So they might say to me, are you all right? And I might right. say, well, not really. Okay. But, but I'll deal with it. Okay. What about bodily signals? Are you good at recognising when you're hungry, thirsty? Am I good at recognising when I'm hungry? I don't get hangry, no. I just go and get something to eat. Yeah. And would you say you're, I, I think, and I think I'm, I'm the same, I think you're probably quite highly sensitive to your bodily signals, you know? I, I, I'm, I can't answer. I just don't notice that. Um, I am what I am. I, I, no. I know that might disappoint you to answer the question, but I don't I've, I've, see I've got, guys. I've got an example, but it might be embarrassing. Well, well, go on. When you need to go for a wee, you have to go right there and then. You cannot wait. You know, like if we're in the car, most of us can like wait until the pit stop. You have to like pull over, you know, get the whole coach to stop. You can't hold that in. I remember, I remember I've got a memory of being about five and you were, you were doing a bit of gardening. Next thing I know, knew, you were just, you were just pissing on the lawn. 
And I remember saying, Dad, why don't you go to the toilet? I'm not, that's just because I want to go. I, I, I mean, it's fine, Dad. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure it's, where Honestly, that's Dad, going. Dad, this is a space in which people, you know, you know people are, where people own their stuff. I, I think okay. I just want to make it very clear to your viewers I do use the toilet in the right and proper way. And um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so I'm interested. I mean, I, I'm not on Facebook. I'm only, I'm direct to Zoom on my phone. So, what what is uh, is there anything that's annoying people? Is there anything that is intriguing people? Is there anything that um... <laughs> you're looking for feedback? You're looking. Well, for no, feedback. because I don't. I can't see the feedback. I know. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll go. So it's like you know, I, I I can't find stuff interesting if I can't see what's being. You know, written about. I can't. I, I can't see anything. Very good point. Very good point. I'm straight on my phone on Zoom. I'm not on Facebook. Do you think I'm? Do you think I'm mean to you? It doesn't really bother me. Yeah. No, because I think I think you can be quite thick-skinned, can't you? I'm very thick-skinned. No, like you don't, because like and um, Mum said I used I I'd get this from you. Like we don't have the same. Um, experiences of perhaps embarrassment and shame that a lot of people do like, no. we're, like like we're often in situations that are quite compromising and humiliating but we, we seem to be okay with it well you're, you're people do people like to wind you up do people like to well I think I, I think, think people... I think a lot of people find you fascinating and then they do but I think they probably want to wind me up because they think it's sport yeah, well, it is funny, isn't it? Anyway, um, okay, this is amazing. Anna Zuzel says, this is amazing, right? <laughs> no, it's pretty amazing because they have probably seen you a million times online and they've never seen me. So they probably find it fascinating that you are my son and I am your father. Do you get into lots of argument, says Hannah? What at home or at work? Just generally. Um, I try not to. I try. I try and have a. I probably could be argumentative, yes. Okay. But again, this, you asked this question about twenty minutes ago. If I think I'm right, I'll stand by it. Okay. Cool. Cool. Rigidity and flexibility. Check. Um, ratatouille. Ratatouille, ratatouille. I think that answers that one. There you go. Um, are you protective over your self-image? No, because I don't think I do have one because um, I've been very lucky to have a lot of good things in life, but you'll never see me um, trying to be someone with the best clothes or the best car or I mean I, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I don't have any image to betray other than what I am so I'm not someone that needs to go out and buy shoes and designer clothes or I mean I've got a scooter I'm 58 I've got a, I've got a, that's it I mean so, Lou's got a car but it, you they, it your, are you protecting your image there or I don't think I've got one do you do you feel like you are never really reaching your full potential? No, I've very I, I've. Do you ever have feelings of inadequacy? No, because every single day, even now, I want to be the best. Yeah. At what I do. Do you ever have meltdowns, like moments of emotion? Oh yeah, yeah. God, that was that was quick. Nice. No, but I do. I do. Do you like things done your way? I think we've answered that one. That sounds quite narcissistic um, in terms of whatever, if I think that... So, I, I do. No, but I, I, yeah, I, I think... No, I think the answer to that question is that... It's whilst yes, I'm, Dad. It's yes, it's, and it's no, fine. No, it, it, it is yes, but maybe begrudgingly yes. Right, coming from the... Per what, what about this? Someone says, uh, Nikki says, I think you're a really endearing man. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, so uh, I'll save 
the answer to that is, you know, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm interesting because I've met so many, I've had a, a colourful life and I've um, okay. lived, yeah. and I think that I would be probably interesting to talk to, I would say, I don't know, and that sounds terrible. No, no, but, that no, but, yeah, but you as a person, you as a character, you as a human being, you as a brain. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, wonderful. Um, <coughs> Stacey asks, are our opinions really important to you? Well, your viewers? Yeah. Yeah, because I've asked, of course they are, because I've asked you to relay them. So otherwise you... this, okay. otherwise this, sorry? No, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry. No, otherwise the whole of tonight's a waste of time because the whole thing is interjection, isn't it? Between you, me and your viewers. Yeah. So, Harry, this is your dad. Yes, Tessa. Did you did did you have um, vertigo as a child? Vertigo. It says V E R T I O. No, I think they meant vertigo. Okay. Did you? Yeah, I've, I've always had a fear of heights, and yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yes. Can totally see why Harry has grown up as he has. Cool. Yeah. There's lots of uh. Yeah. There's lots of you and me. Um. Yeah. Cool. Well, they're probably just fascinated, aren't they? That's all. They probably they get a feast of you every day, and they don't really get much of me. <laughs> well, start your own page. No. Mark Thompson, oil brokerage extraordinaire. But that would be so boring. No, it wouldn't. Just talk about what you feel and think. The rest of I, would, I would say I'd get zero viewers. What if someone was defaming you? Would you want to clear the record? You answered that earlier. Well, I think I think if I, I, I tell you what annoys me is someone where if generally in life, if someone makes a judgment on someone before they even spend any time talking to that person and getting to know them and there's I think that's true in all walks of life people are put off by somebody because of what someone said rather than actually speaking to somebody and making time to find out if that is the truth or a lie yes you know find out what someone's you know forget the face value just find out what that person is actually like inwardly okay um do you have good attention to detail, asks Hannah. Oh, massive, yeah. Yeah, he does. Oh, definitely. Ma massive. Definitely, definitely. Right. Um, do you ever find yourself relu reluctant to spend money? Do you ever find yourself miserly? I think we've had quite a privileged... No, that's not... Okay, try not to talk about that again. Well, that's the truth. No, no, we've no, been no, very no, lucky. Okay, yeah. No, do I, I, I know. No, do I like being ostentatious no, or no, no, spending? No, 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 no. Um, do you ever have anxiety around spending money? In other words, are you asking me, am I tight? <laughs> <laughs> I think definitely not. But I want to make sure that if I'm going to be spending money, yeah, yeah. It better be okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. With, with whatever I'm buying, um, be it a holiday, ever, a car, or house, or. Do you, do you ever find it difficult to discard objects, even if they're, you know, old and useless? Am I a hoarder? <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd say I like keeping stuff from the past. Yeah, because it brings back memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but, only for only for not food though. Things. Oh, sorry. Not food though. You 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 like chucking out food. Uh, I I mean I don't, I can't answer that. I don't know. I mean I don't really chuck out food. I, I I'll use what's left in the fridge and make a ratatouille or oh. ratatouille. But I think I think I uh, in terms of hoarding stuff for sentimental reasons, whether it be from 
obviously all the children and um, stuff that Aura and Lola are doing. I found one today, it was absolutely hilarious. I'm, I'm going to send it to you, it was, it was so funny. You, um, and I'll probably frame that. Do you like to go out um, with a backpack? <coughs> yeah. Well, I just walked around Jersey uh, last month. But I remember one time, like... With a backpack on. I remember one time <coughs> we were in Paul and on a boat. I, I wasn't actually there, but I love the story. And you were with Ben and Grandpa and you made a real... And you, you were going out and you went, wait, I need my backpack. And Ben said, why? Went, just in case, you know, just in case, I need my backpack. And then I think you were on a boat and you left the bag... And Ben and Grandpa thought, I wonder what's in there that's so important that he has to bring with him everywhere he goes. And they looked inside the backpack. It was completely empty, apart from one pair of work socks. I can't remember that. I just I, I think you've made that one up. <laughs> no. Even I would not take a backpack out with a pair of work socks. Um, no, that's rubbish. I think you've made that one up. <laughs> Where Ben? Watch. Why is it? Why is he watching this? Um, right. Okay. Cool. So, I, I'm, I'm I'm noticing the time. I want everyone's. Uh, I want everyone to have a go at answering this. Given my dad's answers, given my dad's. Um, you know, visible personality, given the way he speaks, um, what are we feeling with regards to his neurodivergent profile? And yeah, that's it. And be as detailed as you want, be as straight to the point as you want. Um, yeah, let's let's have some answers around around that, please. Um, lots of respect for doing this online to you both. Really enjoying it. I think the com oh, bloody comment section's jumping about. Um, I think the conversations about your potential shared neurodivergence have been some of the most real, fun, funny, and meaningful for our family. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I don't want to check the answers yet. I'm just going, I'm just uh, seeing if I've missed any questions. So a lot of these, oh, this, that's an interesting one, Nina. I, and Nikki as well, I didn't see that. Oh, and Hannah. Um, does anything keep you up at night? Like, do you ever lie awake worrying about things? Especially Never lie awake worrying about things. Always sometimes lie awake thinking about the next day, how I can make a change and how I can better what I am. Okay, cool. Um, what, what but about nothing, I know, because no, I have nothing to worry about. So I'm so confident that everything's fine. That it's, there's nothing to worry is, about. Is everything fine or do you just tell yourself that? Well, <laughs> care for your tooth. Um, <laughs> Don't worry about my tooth. Um, Mind your self-image. That That's sounds true. that sounded a little bit um, pig-headed what I just said, but I don't lie back awake worrying about stuff. I'll deal with it in the morning. You got you got and a also nice, also you got, a nice, you got a nice head. Don't worry. Yeah, and also I don't feel that anything is impossible not to rectify. Right. Um, do you, oh God, come on. Did you have an imaginary friend when you were a child? Oh, I didn't ask that. Did you have an imaginary world? No. I found no imaginary friend? Is that, no. Is that a way no. to? No. Do you like couscous? Yes, I do now. Oh, no way. Yeah. Okay, right. That's uh, that has blown me. That I think I've been, I've been thrown into silence. Not yeah. at all. Um, if you could go back uh, in time, would you do anything differently with with your children when we were very little? Probably the work life balance. Okay. Yeah, because you you're quite addicted to work, aren't you? Well, I still am. Right. Okay. I think the work-life balance, I always find all these parents in Brighton that seem to sort of work from home and just spend the whole day down the beach with their kids and still work and 
I get up at five in the morning, get back at nine at night and just think, well, I actually can't do that. Yeah. So right. there's a tinge of envy, but there's also... Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's, uh, we're going to... The lot I've been given. So, sorry, I, I should really... See, I, I inter... I, 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 my brain works, keeps jumping to new things. Sorry, Dad. Right. So now we're going to talk about um, some of the answers that people have given. So autistic and ADHD, autistic and ADHD, autistic and ADHD, PDA and anencastic, right? I'll, I'll explain that one in a minute. I don't even think I've told you about that, that one. Autistic, ADHD, PDA, or ADHD and autistic. Um, autistic uh, with ADHD hyperactivity, but not inattentiveness. ADHD, ADHD and autistic, ADHD and autistic, autistic, PDA, combined ADHD, ADHD autistic, ADHD, autism with a PDA profile, um, ADHD, maybe autistic, oh, maybe autistic, come now. Um, so, okay, so let's have a look. I'm just, I'm just looking at some, some, now some people are giving detailed answers. Yeah, but we've got a bit more time left, you know, Maybe a bit of detail, you know. Maybe um, may, I should have actually asked people to do this um, more clearly. Maybe justify some of your answers. You know, why do you think he's ADHD? Why do you think he's autistic? Why <coughs> an, an anencastic personality dad is um, insistence on um, uh, you know attention to detail, perfectionism, uh, needing to be in control, not liking giving tasks to other people. Um, anxiety about spending sometimes for security reasons, um, you know. So, so if if one of my um, if one of my belongings gets slightly damaged, I obsess over that, right? And I can't stop thinking about it. No, and, do, I to, yeah. and I have to throw it away and get a new one that's new and perfect. Um, so yeah. I think you can be like that with things getting scratched and like dented and. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I can relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the differences you have with your dad are similar to two of my children. One needs routine predictability and structure. The other child is PDA and cannot stand even a planner on the wall. Um, you did well with that insight. The work thing is important. Mark your face. Listen to the verdicts are cute. So has anyone got any more? Because that's what. You know, I, some some feet, some more feedback. You know, why do you think he's autistic, ADHD, anencastic, PDA? So those are the one. Those are the, and that's precisely my my profile as well, right? So, um, do you you know where am I? What am I going? What am I trying to ask? I went to ask about three things at once. Then, what do you think about that? You know, do you understand? I mean, you've got a slightly biased audience, haven't you? Because they were they were bound to say, yeah, they were bound to say that. I mean, I was expecting it. I wasn't expecting someone to say, well, he's completely normal, pretty fair guy, and I don't know what the hell happened to you, Harry. Well, that's you don't get it from your dad at all. I mean, what you know, the hell was, happened to you? What I mean, no, but what I'm saying is, I'm I'm being um, I'm being sarcastic, but I was expecting it to be that I wasn't expecting any of your viewers to say well he's a pretty normal kind of guy um what the hell you know where did he get it from where did you get it from because I couldn't see it from your dad it probably is fairly plainly obvious I I am somewhere on the spectrum yeah yeah, yeah. cool uh somewhere on the spectrum brilliant um the woke brigade, the, the woke brigade will We'll have you for that. Well, uh, yeah, but you're all whether you don't, don't worry, Dad. It's okay. I, I've been very um, kind of direct with everything. So you, there's like I said, I'm not looking for all your viewers to like me or dislike me. I'm just looking for them. No, no, I'm looking for them. I think it's great that they're giving you a straight answer, but I'm not sort of touting out for. Yeah. So people are saying, um, you know, all, with aut autism, they've noticed, um, you know, some. Your examples suggested rigidity and flexibility, routine, liking routines, liking safe foods, um, 
you know, ADHD, perhaps there's been a bit of mutual interruption between us. That's one of my worst habits. Awareness of the differences, different perspectives on things. Um, we don't pick it up in NTs. You are normal. <laughs> no. PDA, because of his... In PDA, oh, for fuck's sake. Ah, the comments keep jumping up and down. PDA. Language, Harry. <laughs> you obviously don't read my post. Um, PDA, because of his interest in people. He has autistic traits, but seeks social interaction and likes characters. That is a very PDA thing. Um, anencastic, because of how conscientious he is, his attention to detail. Um, people are saying a bit of RSD there, you know. What's RSD? Um, well, maybe uh, yeah, this has come up, like, you know, you, you justify your answers a lot. Well, because you've asked me in the mind. No, no, so no, yeah, I know. Oh, oh you mean you're it's more, no, it's oh, so more like justifying that. why I said what I well, said. Maybe, maybe you have to, um, like, um, prove that you're not a bad person, you know, like, you, you might say something, you're like, oh, well, I, you know, I didn't quite mean it like that. You know, I think I've... Um... Well, I'd, I'd actually disagree with whoever said that because I'm not looking... I mean, I, I wake up being the person I am every day, so I'm not looking for, um, you know, adulation from anyone. I mean, I'll just, I just bitch head down, try and be the best I can. I'm not looking for anyone to say, wow, you are this and that. And okay. So I, I'd actually disagree with that. Okay. So that person saying I'm looking for adulation with every answer. No, that's not quite what that's not quite what I said, and that's not quite what they said. Right, um, well, Alexander. Oh, you mean justification for every answer? No, just maybe just in case, maybe um, just in case someone may find fault in what you're saying, or you know, have a reason to not like your answer. Or... No, but I've given that answer a few minutes ago. I, okay. I, I might think that I'm right but eventually i will concede and say fair play okay. I'm wrong. Uh, let's 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 read some more comments um alexandra says i love how you get past the fluffy stuff and get straight to the point correct you like that one you do you have a powerful inner critic yeah <laughs> do you know what that means well yeah because i think i do know what that means do i have a power in it so do i do i inwardly criticize some of the things to myself like like do you have a voice that's you know yeah lurking? yeah a voice telling me actually that's right that's wrong this is what you should do i i, I would call it more of a gut reaction i always or i say to myself if i'm confused about you know a decision at work i will always go with my inner gut reaction okay right and i play it out in my head the scenarios if I had made one direction or the other, or mm -hmm. if I went with one direction or the other. Okay. Uh, Mike Paul obsession, very PDA. No, the the Mike Paul thing is an it is a family joke, <laughs> <laughs> and I try and get that to get a reaction from Harry because I know that Harry Ben and Ella every time I mention Mike Paul they go into fits of giggles because he was a character. Yeah. And it makes you laugh. Um, people have noticed, or PDA people obsessions, he has a, he can misinterpret communication. Uh, do you fear offending people? Oh, God. On a personal basis, yes. Business, absolutely not. Okay. And that would be probably constitutes as ruthless. Okay, uh, just a... Uh, okay. Impatience, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I think that's... Um, I think I think we could be done there. uh yeah i think you know what yeah i mean that's uh it's, we've been going for an hour and 35 minutes that's quite a yeah long time. yeah and you know probably getting a bit uh low on spoons as we like to say 
Um, no, I, th I think we've probably covered everything. Haven't we? I yeah, think we if we went on any more, I think it might be a bit repetitive. No, it's OK. But you know what? We've, we've maintained quite a strong audience throughout. You know, I've, I've watched the numbers. It's been quite level. You know, I think we got up to about 80 viewers at one point, but we haven't dipped below 50. So that's, you know, that's a strong audience and lots more people are going to watch it. But, you know, Dad, thanks. Honestly, that doing that is no easy feat, you know, like fleshing yourself bare, being probed, you know, scrutinised, interrogated. You know, well, I, I'm fine with it. I mean, I knew what was coming, but yeah, I yeah. tried to answer you, everything yeah. as honestly as, as I can. I can't, I mean, I might not have satisfied some of the answers to you, but no, then your viewers don't. About that. It's, it's not, this isn't a case of um, winning, losing. This is a case of just seeing what you do with the answers more than anything. So, so for me, tonight was, for, for me, tonight was obviously a bit of fun. Yeah, of yeah. interaction but if anybody that's out there with a the family you know mum and dad or with their kids listening and it helps then that's great isn't it yeah no of course or to to get a greater understanding yeah 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 and so um, my verdict is i've always known my dad's autistic ever since i was diagnosed um i think he's uh i think he has a pda profile um, I think uh, he has managed to work out um, what his purpose is and how he can make it happen. And that has allowed him to stay in control. He has a lot of intrinsic motivators. I do think he's ADHD and I think he's anencastic. And his hyperactivity is a lot more obvious than his inattentive side, though it is there, right? I, I've seen him get bored in conversations and get up and pace around and... Um, but the, what the anencastic personality does, it acts as a compensation. It acts as a compensation. So where the natural ADHD tendency is to, you know, uh, perhaps uh, drift off, zone out, make mistakes, it's compensating, right? It ensures that the problems with executive functioning uh, is kept in check. I notice that happening uh, within my own experience as well. So that would be my verdict. Um, Dad, one day I really want you to have an official assessment. That would be my dream. <laughs> you know, honestly, you would make me so happy if you went and had a, a, a full multidisciplinary assessment at the Help for Psychology Clinic or the Nest Clinic, you know, to, to name but a couple of really good reputable clinics. One day, can you please promise me that you will? That's all I ever ask of you, yeah? We'll get you there by hook or by crook. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, everyone's saying thank you. Very interesting. Um, it's been a fulfilling Zoom. Thank you. Mark with a C. Um, does your will I be able to see these? If I go onto Facebook afterwards, will I be able to see these comments or not? Yeah. And prepare yourself, everyone. Here he comes. Um, but yeah. Well, you, not yet. What do, you, what do you think about it? Just, just very last question, you know. Um, thinking about yourselves in those terms, you know, is, is there a, is it okay? Is it okay to be, you know, those things, autistic, ADHD? I, I know some I think, I, I think it's okay because I think most of my life with any social interaction or work interaction, most people have said you are anyway. So it wouldn't be a great shot. It wouldn't be, so you're, you're fine with it. So if someone- yeah, It's not gonna like freak yeah. me out. I mean, it, it's kind yeah. of, um it, it's kind of the inevitable if you came to one of my uh events uh at which a lot of neurodivergent people <laughs> and you got into conversation with someone and they said are you autistic would you say yes well until i'm diagnosed um then that's unfair for me to say yes isn't it but it, it, would i say i probably have tendencies i'd say yes okay right so yeah Let's get you diagnosed then. All right, Dad. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, I hope you're, fe you're feeling all right. Am I feeling right? Are you feeling all right? You know? Yeah, I feel great. Yeah. I Good. Feel, I, that was, I didn't realise that that was an hour and a half. Oh, more than that. Hour and 40 minutes. So we will wrap it up. Yeah. All right. Well, Way we'll... past my bedtime. Okay, right. We're we'll already get... thinking about work in the morning, by the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Well, can, you can continue with your routine now. Um, and... What is the time? Does anyone know? 
Good grief. Right, yeah. So I'll let you get on. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And I'll see you all next week. Bye now. <laughs>